It's 11 o'clock and the transfer window has officially closed. There will be no more transfer business done uh, this January. Well, we're into February now uh, and, uh, well, we will be into February in about an hour. Uh, the transfer window is closed. It's clearly getting to me as well. Getting to Martin Lipton as well, our chief uh, football writer. He's in Swansea. He's just witnessed a big, big uh, upset in many respects because many people did expect Chelsea to go there and win against the promoted side, but they've been held to a 1-1 draw and rescued by a late, late goal by Jose Bissimler. More on that in just a second, but let me just tell you now, uh, Kenny Dalglish at Liverpool been speaking about a possible transfer for Jermaine Defoe says it is not going to happen. He says here, I told you yesterday uh, that there would be nothing happening, so it's insulting when you don't believe us. So maybe we should believe uh, Kenny Dalglish at <laughs> Liverpool. Um, a couple of other <laughs> signings to tell you about as well because uh, uh, Sebastian Basson, Harry Redknapp at the Tottenham match has told reporters there that Sebastian Basson, the defender, will go to Wolves on loan. He also says that Spurs are trying to tie up, and I would imagine they've done so by now, a deal for the Blackburn defender, Ryan Nelson, to go to White Hart Lane. Harry Redknapp's also confirmed that the Juventus winger Milos Krasic, a deal could have been done to take him to White Hart Lane, but that has fallen through, which means Stephen Pienaar stays at Tottenham, doesn't go to Everton. Now, what we understand here at Football Spy is that Milos Krasic wanted a permanent deal and Spurs only wanted to do a loan deal. And that's the reason that that deal has fallen through. Remember, you can get details on all of the deals that have taken place and indeed full match reports and all of tonight's very dramatic matches in the Premier League on the Mirror Football website, mirrorfootball.co.uk. But let's go to Martin in Swansea because, Martin, a really dramatic match uh, for Andre villas boas men. Yeah, he went through all the uh, all the emotions on the, on the winger today, but as far as I mean, they were pretty awful, Chelsea. First half, they were embarrassingly poor. They had absolutely nothing to offer. Deservedly a goal behind. Typical, really, that a former Chelsea player scored the goal. On the day that Fernando celebrates his anniversary of being a Chelsea player, a player who left the club for one hundredth of the figure, scored the goal. Scott Sinclair. Uh, it's been a bad day for Chelsea. We've had the, the losses off the pitch. We should have had a loss on the pitch as well. Two minutes, three minutes into injury time. The last few seconds, Bazingo shot deflected off of Neil Taylor. Chelsea get away with a point, but they're seven behind Spurs. And to be honest, they don't even look like coming close to filling that uh, catch in them at the moment. They were very, very poor, very, very ordinary. Interestingly, indeed, it w looked like a warning to Torres. I said, uh, over a thousand minutes without a goal, Villas Boas basically saying. Didier Drogba, when he comes back, we all know his record. We all wow. know what he means to Chelsea. He's the one he's in competition with. Sounds to me like Torres is going to be back on the bench very, very soon. And so. Interesting, because Spur, uh, Chelsea, we understand, have made a move for the 18-year-old Nottingham Forest striker Patrick Bamford. He scored, played only 12 minutes of first-team football for Nottingham Forest. Uh, he scored around yeah. about nine goals in a couple of games for the academy side, and uh, he's moved to sign him for a million pounds. He really is looking at youth uh, and looking to maybe uh, improve on his options because they've spent so much money on Torres and he just isn't delivering for the club. Well, they spent a lot of money. They spent 70 million this season alone. It gets lost, but you've got Mata, you've got Lukaku, you've got Cahill and De Bruyne in this window, Mavellez as well, and Courtois is on loan. Um, it looks like the, the uh, deal for, for Bamford will go through. Um, he'll be into the, into the youth team squad, but he won't be in the first team squad. No. It's too early for that, you feel. But there is a move to the future. There's got to be massive changes at Chelsea. Tonight, just proved it. This is an old, ageing squad. And also, worse today, no leaders, no John Terry, no Frank Lampard, no Didier Drogba. Nothing. No ambition, no enthusiasm, no power, no force in the team. They were terrible. They were very, very lucky. Now, we started off this evening, Martin, you gave us the team news at 7 o'clock, and you told us that having spent £7 million on a defender in this January transfer window, Andre Villas-Boas decided not to field the England defender, Gary Cahill. Can you st can, has he given you any indication as to why he decided not to do that? Yeah, he basically said that he didn't want to... Um to change a defence that have played before. He said we've been doing good displays defensively recently. Uh, we, these back four have played together as a unit. 
I told Gary he understood and took the decision well. Didn't look to be taking it terribly well on the dugout. Didn't even look at the television pictures. I don't think he's very happy. I wouldn't be if I were him. He came to Chelsea to play football. That's why he chose Chelsea rather than Spurs or United or Liverpool or the other teams that are interesting. Three games, not a single minute on the pitch, not even when John Terry's not here. He won't be very happy at all, and I can understand that. We're talking to the chief football writer of the Daily Mirror, Martin Lipton. He's been at Swansea this evening to see them hold Chelsea to a 1-1 draw. Just while we've been talking to him, news coming through that Liverpool have failed in an attempt to loan Luke Castanos, the forward from Internazionale. Uh, Everton were also interested in taking the Dutchman, uh, both those clubs failing to take him. Uh, what do you think, uh, Martin, just going back to the game tonight and the implications for the Premier League, what does that say for Chelsea's Champions League chances? They're falling further and further behind Spurs. They look as though they could be caught by uh, Liverpool and indeed if Arsenal get their act together as well. Well, it looks like at the moment that there are three, maybe even with Newcastle, four teams playing for fourth. That Spurs will be third at worst the way they're playing. You know, let's be honest, had that Jermaine Defoe chance in the last few seconds of injury time before the penalty at, at Man City last Sunday week gone in, Spurs would now be top of the league. That's how close it is. They would be top, not third. They are within five points. They're seven points clear of Chelsea. They're currently 13 points clear of, uh, of, of Arsenal. You know, it looks like three or four for fourth with Spurs the third and the two Manchester clubs first and second. You wouldn't be surprised if that happens. Chelsea at the moment, I mean, they, they're just not very good. And they could lose, they lose to United and Arsenal win the next two, which, you know, they, they should win at Bolton and then at home at the weekend. Chelsea will be fifth with, uh, with Liverpool also breathing down their necks because obviously Liverpool play Spurs on, on Monday night. If you were Chelsea... You start to be worried, no question. Now, we've spent all this time talking about Chelsea. Tell us a bit about Swansea, the best defensive record in the Premier League. They've had so many clubs come to the Liberty Stadium and leave without scoring. Big clubs too. Uh, what is the secret to the success of the manager, Brendan Rodgers? He's got his players to play football in every single element of the park. There was one moment in the first half today when they were pinned back in their own left-hand defensive quadrant. They thought, no way out. They just pass their way around Chelsea. They do it. Wherever they get the ball, they pass. And then they pass. And then they pass some more. And then they pass another one just for, the, just for show. They love playing football. They are a credit to the manager. They are a credit to the, to, to the city. They are fantastic. Um, you know, they, they really deserve to win tonight. They've only lost one at home all season. They are an absolutely outstanding football team. It's the first time I've seen them uh, here this season. I'd come again. They're brilliant. They're absolutely fabulous to watch. Now, uh, Martin, let's just get an overview uh, from you of this January's transfer window. There haven't been any big deals in, in the manner that they were on deadline day last year. Andy Carroll, who's had such a great night tonight, one goal, two assists, and a fabulous performance against Wolves. Um, no big deals like the £35 million that took him to Liverpool last year or the, the £50 million that took Fernando Torres uh, to Chelsea, but lots of lower-level deals, a lot of frantic business done uh, around the middle and the bottom end of the Premier League. What's your overview on how things have developed today? Well, well it's been a, a, a great day for excitement and interest, not a great deal for, for, for money, really. I would say that if you're, if you're one manager who feels pleased with the way things go on, given how late he came in particularly, you, you would be Mark, uh, Mark Hughes tonight. I think he's got in quality. I think Zamora and Cissé should be what they need. He's attacking threat and goals. Uh, they've got Diakati as well. We know they had Anua, Anua and, and Tywin last week. So they've got five in. That's really, really important. I think QPR had the best of it all. Um, it'd be interesting to see how the Russian boy goes at Fulham. I think losing Zamora to get him in may or may not be a, a great stroke by, by Martin Yard. Yeah, Pavel Pogrebniak. Yeah, how many score goals? And he obviously wanted out of Stuttgart. Clearly, what he said tonight that he, he felt like he was unwanted there. Um, just as it seems, all the Russians are leaving. We get one in. You know, Arshavin looks like he might still go. Uh, Pavlochenko could well go to Lokomotiv or. or, or well, Pavlochenko's gone to Lokomotiv for around about eight million, eight million pounds. No loss of Spurs that at all. I don't think. Um, the big boys didn't really do too much. Obviously, City have got um, the Chilean in uh, as a midfielder. Not David quite. Pizarro. Not sure how he fits in. He's an attacking midfielder, but he lost his play because he wasn't physical enough for the Italian league under Claudio Manieri. Well, let's be fair, it's a bit more physical over here, so he may have a, have a few points to, to make. Liverpool didn't get the goals I thought they needed. You know, Manchester United's significant signing was 38-year-old Paul Scholes. It's a strange world, isn't it? <laughs> 
<laughs> Very much so. Now, um, Bobby Zamora, interesting one, that one, because he's gone from Fulham, where he was doing so well, helped them to reach the Europa League final a couple of years ago. Martignol didn't want him, he made it very clear he was no longer his number one, and shifted him on. QPR have signed him. Will that be a loss? Is that a mistake from Martignol? Oh, I think so, yeah. I think Mark, I think Mark Hughes has had a fantastic day today. I think getting Bobby Zamora on its own would have been a great day. Getting CC as well just caps it off. Zamora's ability will be enough to keep QPR in the top division. It's as simple as that. That's how good he is. That's how important he'll be for them. Massive loss of Fulham. They're not going to have anyone who can hold the ball up like that because there are very few players in the country who can hold the ball up like uh, Bobby Zamora. I can't understand it personally. I'm sure Martin Young has his reasons. We know they don't get on personally. We've seen that. I think it's madness. I really do. We're talking to Martin Lipton, the chief football writer of the Daily Mirror, about the day's transfer business and indeed the month's uh, transfer business as well. We're having emails coming into us all the time. People talking about the move of Ravel Morrison, the former Manchester United midfielder. He has signed a two and a half year deal, a three and a half year deal, I should say, uh, at West Ham. And uh, so Alex Ferguson's been talking about that tonight and uh, not been very complimentary. He says he's better off out of Manchester. Would you agree, Martin? Well, if, if Fergie can't work out how to keep Ravel Morrison on the straight and narrow, you wonder if anyone can. The talent is unquestioned. They've been talking about him for years at United as being the next big thing to come through. And yet, he can't stay out of trouble. He's been in court for too many things. Um, there is an argument, and it's not an unreasonable one, to suggest that if you can't behave yourself in Manchester, what's it going to be like when the bright lights of the big city in London, where you're anonymous, where no one really knows you, allows you the chance to perhaps behave even worse. It's a huge, huge task for Sam Allardyce. However, probably he would say a gamble worth taking because the talent is unquestioned. If he can get and harness Ravel Morrison, he'll be sold for £10 million in two years' time. I mean, he's that sort of talent, if not more. He's fantastically gifted. He's also, it seems, incapable of behaving himself. For Fergie to say that says it all, really. Uh, we've got some losers from uh, today's transfer window and from January's transfer window. Christopher Samba hasn't managed to secure the big move that he wanted. Went on the front foot, said he wanted out of Blackburn, handed in the transfer request. He stays, so too does Arshavin, booed by Arsenal's fans. Uh, they don't want him. It had been believed that he would go to Anzi Makachkala. He stays at the Emirates. Uh, your thoughts on those two players, Martin? Well, the Russian window's not dead, not shut yet. So Indeed, it's correct, yes. Uh, Samba, though, he, a penny for his thoughts tonight. Uh, mind you, he's got a few pennies in his bank, hasn't he? <laughs> but he obviously didn't want to be there. He made it crystal clear. The reaction of the, of the Blackburn fans would be key now. How they react to him. He's got no option. He can't not play. He's a, foot, he's a professional footballer. He's got to stay. He's got to play. But if he makes a single mistake, they'll be on his back. They'll question his commitment. They'll ask if he's deliberately doing it. That's a big pressure for anyone to be under. Saying that, if Blackburn stay up, then they'd have done the right thing. They'll, they'll feel they've, they've, they've showed you know, courage under enormous pressure to sell. And that's their argument. They, they know that it's worth selling him, him even for less money than they would have got in the summer if he keeps them up now. I can understand the gamble, but it is still a gamble. Uh, a couple of clubs rejecting some very big money for, for players today. Uh, we've had Middlesbrough rejecting a £6 million bid uh, from Bolton for the defender, uh, Reese Williams. And we have also had, which is very interesting indeed, uh, Crystal Palace rejecting £7 million from Bolton for Wilfred Zaha. Are you surprised by that? I'm absolutely stunned by Crystal Palace. I mean, I know Steve Parrish has said he didn't want to sell and he's obviously got Nathaniel Klein as well who's got real talent but you'd have thought that one would go. It would have made sense. £7 million is an awful lot of money for Crystal Palace to turn them down. Um, unless they've got another buy lined up for £10 million in the summer in which case, fair enough, you know, you can understand it. But it's a very, very shout for them. Looking, you know, their season is not really going to be about silverware. It's not going to be about promotion realistically. It's about just plodding around and, and making sure they stay in the, in, in, in the championship. Uh, £7 million is far more money than they would earn from the television deal from, you know, from Gate Proceeds. But that's more than their profit for the entire next two years, and they've turned it down. A brave, brave call. As for Middlesbrough, they still think they can get promoted. Perhaps that explains why they've done it. Uh, if not, then they can cash in on Williams in the summer. 
One more for you before we let you go from freezing Swansea. Uh, thanks for sticking with us this evening on this uh, transfer deadline day evening. Martin Lipton, our chief football writer. Arsenal, you talked about bravery. Very brave of Arsene Wenger not to bring in another striker. When Thierry Henry goes, the burden will all be on Robin Van Persie to score goals. Is that a risk? Well, I think it's strange, I have to say. I mean, we know that Van Persie... His injury record is never in the best. This is with his longest un uh, uninjured spell since he came to the club. And he's done terrific 25 goals. He's the star man. He he's the leader of the team. And many say he's a one-man team. He needed some support. Thierry Henry's only here for another three weeks. And then he goes back. Who else is going to score a goal? Javinho has done OK, but he's only scored four goals. Shamak's a, 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 a shadow of the player they thought they were signing. Arsh, no one wants him anymore. Um, there's no goals in that team. It's a major, major issue. It's a very interesting decision. I'm not sure it's the right one. The only thing is, of course, the way Chelsea are, are seem to be combusting almost internally, the opening there is, is there for Chelsea, for Liverpool Arsenal to get back into that fight for fourth. But look at Liverpool. Look at Newcastle with Denver Bar and also, of course, Pape Sisse now to come back from... They're both back now from Senegal, from African Nations Cup. They're going to score goals. You know, it's a tough, tough call. And Arsenal don't want to be seventh, do they? They can't afford to, be, to not be in Europe. To be fair, they can't afford to not be in the Champions League. Martin Lipton, our chief football writer, thank you very much indeed for joining us after a very dramatic day, both on and off the pitch in the Premier League and in the lower leagues on this January transfer window deadline day. We thank you for joining us for what has been a fascinating uh, 18 hours of activity. and We hope you'll be back with us here on the Mirror Football website.